Cholesterol is a waxy substance found in our blood and unlike what most of us think, it is not inherently bad. In fact, cholesterol is required by our body to fulfill various functions. So then if cholesterol is required by the body, when does it turn problematic? And if you have been detected with high blood cholesterol, what are things that you can naturally do to manage your blood cholesterol levels? If you are interested in finding out, please keep watching. Hi everyone, my name is Nirupama. I am a PhD in food science and a certified nutrition coach. Other than making YouTube videos, I also offer personal health coaching. If you are interested in getting in touch, I leave a link to my website in the description box. Let's get started. As I mentioned at the beginning of my video, cholesterol is required by our body to fulfill a variety of functions. The three most important ones being to build the structure to our cells. We are made of trillions of cells and cholesterol is the most important component in the membrane covering our cells. Our cells can hold their structural integrity thanks to the cholesterol. Cholesterol is required to make hormones. We need adequate cholesterol to make the mother hormone in our body known as pregnenolone. Pregnenolone is then converted to other hormones like estrogen, progesterone, testosterone in the body, all of which fulfill very important functions in the body. Cholesterol is essential in our body for production of vitamin D. Our skin needs adequate cholesterol to produce vitamin D from sunlight. So then if cholesterol is required by the body, when does it become harmful? Our bodies make our own cholesterol. Cholesterol is made in the liver and then sent out to the blood. In fact, 80% of the cholesterol in our body is made in the liver and only 20% comes from the diet. Since cholesterol is a fatty substance, it cannot move around in the blood by itself. So it attaches itself to particles which help it move around. These particles are called lipoproteins and lipoproteins help cholesterol move in the blood. There are five types of lipoproteins but the ones that concern us the most are low density lipoprotein or LDL and high density lipoprotein or HDL. LDL transports cholesterol from our liver to our blood and too much LDL can result in plaque formation and clogging of our arteries which eventually can lead to heart attacks and stroke. Therefore, LDL is known as the bad cholesterol. The other lipoprotein is known as high density lipoprotein or HDL whose role is to transport cholesterol from our blood to our liver for disposal. So HDL takes away the cholesterol from our blood and therefore HDL is known as good cholesterol. The recommended ratio of LDL to HDL is 1.5 to 3.5. The lower this ratio, the better your lipid profile and lower your risk of heart ailments. Other than LDL and HDL, there is another component known as triglycerides which is basically a kind of fat that circulates in our blood. When we eat, our body converts any calories that we do not need into triglycerides and these triglycerides are then stored away in the fat cells of the body. If you regularly eat way more calories than what your body needs, you are at a risk of high triglycerides which also puts you at a risk of heart ailments, stroke and the entire metabolic syndrome which includes obesity, risk of high blood sugar and high blood pressure. If you have been detected with high LDL cholesterol or high blood triglycerides, glycerides, there are few things that you can pursue by yourself to bring down your cholesterol levels. Let's get to them. Packet snacks include packaged biscuits, chips, bhujiyas, nachos and deep fried food items include samosas, papris, kachoris, deep fried sweets like gulab jamun, jalebi, gujiyas, etc. All these foods are a sizable source of saturated fats and trans fats in the diet and it has been shown extensively that both saturated fats and trans fats are a leading cause of increased serum LDL cholesterol and triglyceride levels. So if you want to bring down your serum cholesterol levels, these foods definitely need to take a back seat. Good fats, especially the polyunsaturated fatty acid known as linoleic acid has been shown to help in reducing serum LDL cholesterol and at the same time helping in amp up the serum HDL cholesterol or the good cholesterol. Linoleic acid is found abundantly in nuts, seeds, eggs, so it's a good idea to include these in your diet. 
there are two types of fiber in the foods that we eat soluble fiber and insoluble fiber and soluble fiber has been specifically studied to help in lowering down our ldl cholesterol levels soluble fiber is found in foods like oat bran barley in lentils like masoor tuwar or urad dals peas like black eyed peas or lobia and the various kinds of beans like red kidney beans or rajma some fruits and vegetables like apples guavas pears uh, broccoli turnips sweet potatoes are also good sources of soluble fiber so if you are looking to lower your ldl cholesterol levels try to include these foods more often in your diet Certain dairy products like butter, cheese and paneer are high in saturated fats and therefore reducing the intake of these foods or eliminating these foods from the diet can help in bringing down your LDL cholesterol levels. However, it has been found in an interesting study that milk, either whole milk or skim milk and fermented dairy products like dahi, yogurt or kefir can in fact help in lowering our serum LDL levels when consumed as a part of a healthy diet. So while products like butter cheese and paneer can be avoided milk and fermented milk products can be included in the diet Scientific data supports the role of physical activity and exercise in lowering our LDL cholesterol levels and increasing the HDL or good cholesterol in the body If you are new to exercise moderate intensity aerobic exercise is recommended and adding some resistance training or weight training to your aerobic exercise routine can further enhance the effects on your lipid profile Chronic stress or stress that lasts for a long time puts us at a risk for high cortisol in the body and high cortisol has been suggestive of putting us at increased risk for heart attacks strokes and other heart ailments therefore it is highly recommended to consciously engage in stress relieving activities from time to time There's a term called familial hypercholesterolemia which basically means that we inherit genes from our mother, father or grandparents that causes us to have too much blood cholesterol. The severity of familial hypercholesterolemia depends on the duration and amount of cholesterol in the blood. Therefore, if you have a family history of high blood cholesterol, it is a good idea to get yourself tested regularly and if your cholesterol levels are outside the recommended limits, you must consult a physician. So my seven tips for naturally managing your high blood cholesterol are reducing the intake of packaged and fried foods in the diet, amping up the level of good fats in your diet, boosting your fiber intake, managing intake of dairy and dairy products, making exercise a part of your regular routine, stress management and getting yourself regularly tested. I hope you guys found today's video useful. If you did, do give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down in the comment box. I'll see you guys in my next video. Take care until then. Bye.